Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 1.4 on absolute value equations. Our essential question is, how can you solve an absolute value equation? Well, I think our first question is, what is an absolute value equation? And what's absolute value? Well, let's do a little review first. I know you know some things about absolute value. Uh, this thing. All right, here we go. What are you doing about absolute value? First of all, this first thing here. Uh, I mean, she's blue. Absolute value of A, always greater than or equal to zero. It's always positive. That's why they call me the absolute value teacher. I'm always positive. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Number two, absolute value of negative A equals the absolute value of A. What does that mean? Well, means opposites have the same absolute value. Same abs, I'm gonna, abs val, abs val. So we know that uh, like negative, the absolute value of negative three equals three. And the absolute value of three is also three. So, uh, some people kind of confuse this with uh, number one in which they think, oh, it just means that you take off the negative sign. Well, that's not really true. It's just that it's, it's really defined as the distance from zero on the number line. So since opposite numbers are the same distance from zero on the number line, they will have the same absolute value. Number three, the absolute value of A times B equals the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. Huh? Absolute values may be multiplied. That makes things easy for us when we're trying to solve equations. And number four, well, it's really the same thing. Because they may be multiplied, they may also be divided. I put maybe. I want maybe. I want maybe. I want may be divided. How's that? Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about absolute values a little bit, let's talk about the equations. So solving absolute value equations, uh, let's take a look at what this says here. To solve the absolute value of a times x plus b equals c, when c is greater than zero, why? Well, because absolute values have to be positive. So this expression has to be equal to a positive value. We're going to solve the inside for the positive C or negative C. Why is that? Well, like I just told you before, since uh, negative 3, absolute value of negative 3 equals 3, and the absolute value of 3 equals 3. Well, see, the things in here are opposites, right? They're both opposites. So what that means is we want to take what's ever inside and set it equal to the positive value, same as here, and then it's opposite. If C is less than zero, like I said earlier, if C is less than zero, if C is negative, we can have no solution because absolute values are always positive. Well, let's take a, let's take a look at some examples and uh, take a look at uh, what this means in practice. Let example 1a, these are in your textbook in page 28 in case you're looking for these. Solve each equation, graph the solutions if possible. Uh, let's take a look here. Absolute value of x minus 4 equals 6, that's okay, right? It's a positive value. So we're going to write two cases, a positive case, so x minus 4 equals 6. And then the negative case, x minus 4 equals negative six. One thing super important is when you write our two cases here, I like to write them side by side. Uh, it looks a little neater to me. Uh, we're, right, we're dealing with what's inside the absolute value brackets. So when we write these two equations, of course, the absolute value brackets disappear because we're dealing with what's inside the bracket because we know it's either positive or negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve uh, both of these here. X minus four equals six. We're going to add four to both sides. In order to isolate the x on the left, negative 4 plus 4 cancels to a 0, so x equals 10. 
On the uh, right one, I'm going to add four to both sides. And that's going to get me x equals negative 2. So both of these are my solution. All right. So it says graph the solutions if possible. When we're dealing with a single variable, what do we graph it on? And if your answer is a number line, you are correct, sir. Okay, so um, I'll put a zero there, negative two there, and then I don't know, it's like a five and a ten. We'll put a ten there, and those are my two values that make this absolute value equation true. Um, let's just check it out real quick. Negative two minus four is negative six, right? And so that's going to equal uh, absolute value of six. And then 10 minus 4 is positive 6, and the absolute value of 6 is, again, 6. So those do check out, and that's what my graph would look something like that. Uh, example 1b, absolute value of 3 plus, 3x plus 1 equals negative 5. Hmm. Absolute value, again, the left side is an absolute value. The right side is a negative number. This can never be. Absolute values can never be negative. So this is a, a false statement. You know, this is like saying the sky is, uh, well, the sky is purple or something. It's not ever true. So, no solution. Absolute values cannot be a negative value. All right, let's take a look at, uh, I think, another example here. Example two, solving a multiple-step absolute value equation. All right, so this is very similar to other absolute, uh, I'm sorry, to other multiple-step equations we solve but instead of isolating the x first we want to absolute we want to isolate the absolute value first we want apps we want to isolate what's in the bracket first okay okay so the absolute value on the left has a negative 10 with it so let's get rid of that by turning it to a zero by adding 10 and if we do the same uh, if we do uh, whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right. So negative 10 plus 10 is 0. But uh, on the right side, of course, this becomes a 6. So don't be in a rush to say something is a um, no solution if you see a negative number on one side. You can only make that judgment after you've isolated the absolute value bracket. Okay, so now that's isolated. I can see it's equal to a positive, so this is fine. I can write my two cases here. 3x plus 9 equals 6. 3x plus 9 equals negative 6. Positive case, negative case. Subtracting 9 from both sides. 3x equals negative 3. Dividing both sides by... 3 x equals negative 1 on my negative case I'm subtracting 9 from both sides that leaves me 3x is equal to negative 15 dividing both sides by 3 x equals negative Five. And both of these are my solution. Um, and it, so I have two solutions, x equals negative 1 and x equals uh, negative 5. Also, maybe an easier way to write this, negative 1 comma negative 5. Might be a nicer way to write that. Okay, let's take a look at our last example here. In writing an absolute value equation. Now, absolute value equations, to me personally, they're not very intuitive. In other words, yeah, I kind of have to think a lot about uh, what goes where. But I think the easiest thing to do here is just kind of memorize what the form looks like and what goes where. So, in a cheerleading competition, the minimum length of a routine is four minutes. The maximum length of a routine is five minutes. Write an absolute value equation that represents the minimum and maximum lengths. All right. So the first thing we need to do here is find the midway point between the minimum and maximum. Now you'll probably 
know pretty easily between four and five it's going to be four and a half but in case you don't know of course that's uh, four plus five divided by two it's just the average of the two together so 4.5 minutes okay and um, so here's what this looks like it's, again it's just something you kind of have to memorize absolute value x minus 4.5 absolute value is equal to 0 0.5 okay so uh, where did I get the 0 0.5 this is the difference um, this is the difference from the midpoint to either the minimum or maximum and when I say difference I'm really thinking distance um, like on a number line because we're dealing with going both directions now so it gets a little more muddled it's the distance of the midpoint to the min or the max and then this of course is our midpoint or halfway point so x minus that midpoint is 0 0.5 so what does this mean this means well if x let's say we um, the maximum was 5 so 5 minus 4.5 is 0 0.5 absolute value 0 0.5 if x is the um, minimum amount the 4 4 minus 4.5 well that would be negative 0 0.5 but again the absolute value of negative 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 right so again this is something you kind of have to again I'm gonna see you can I have to kind of uh, memorize this form because to me it's not very it's not very intuitive it's not it's something that uh, may not make a lot of sense so you kind of have to kind of look at the form and memorize it okay so let's uh, try these before you leave you might want to pause it here because I'm gonna leave you and you're gonna put your answers in the pod at the uh, at, on the next screen of the pod All right so thanks a lot you guys have been terrific so far thanks a lot have a great great rest of your day